I'm Gabe. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, the folks at The Transcript host Mr. Roman on The Leftovers, continue to raise awareness around climate change, place their bets before the madness begins, and explore the technical elements of waiting for Gatto. Hi, I'm Alexa Cauley. Human Rights Group alleges that the U.S. may have committed war crimes in Somalia. For years, the U.S. has carried out drone strikes to take out an Al-Qaeda-affiliated base there called Al-Shahab. The attacks have been roughly tripled since President Trump took office. This new report says at least 14 civilians have been killed and eight have been injured since 2017. According to the U.S. government, this is incorrect. The military says it's never killed any civilians there. Last week, UK lawmakers rejected Prime Minister Theresa May's Brexit deal for the second time. They also voted in favor of leaving the EU with a deal and in favor of getting an extension. Yesterday in New Zealand, the country's Prime Minister announced changes to the gun laws. This comes after last week's deadly shooting at two mosques, where a gunman killed 50 people. The Prime Minister says the government will ban military-style semi-automatic weapons, assault rifles, and high-capacity magazines. There will also be a buyback program for people who want to give up their guns. The government's expected to introduce this legislation next month. Hi, I'm Alexa. This week, we're cooking with Gino Roman, and we are making chocolate chip cookies. All right. Want help? Yeah, here, why don't you put that in there? Oh, perfect. Put an egg in? Oh, yeah. Do you want to crack the egg? I live for it. Uh, <laughs> look at that, huh? Look at that. <laughs> look at that. No shell in there. And then the most delicious part molasses. That's why I love cooking. Mm hmm So, Gino, can you tell me and everyone else what you do here at NHS on a daily basis? Well, I'm the teacher in the goals classroom, and I work with 10 of the best students in the school. We work on life skills and uh, academics mm -hmm. every day. Can you explain to us what the goals classroom is? or what that means for some students who may not know? Uh, the Goals Classroom is just a, um, a highly supported class for students who need extra help with their academics, with getting all the life skills they need to be successful adults. I noticed during our chat before we started filming mm -hmm. your beautiful tattoos. Could you Sh give us a little show of some of your tattoos and well, if you can stand the muscles mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> the octopus I got was the first tattoo that I had gotten um, when I was teaching it was the mm -hmm. first year because I felt like I had to have at least eight arms to be moving about and doing all the things I had to do mm -hmm. and the expression I was looking no te mata te hace fuerte which means what doesn't kill you makes you stronger but that was before the song so the song kind of took away a lot from how I felt mm -hmm. about it, but I'm, I'm okay. And I got some other ones that are... I like that one. That's my daughter. Yeah? Yeah, when she was really little, she used to say the poem, I see the moon. Mm -hmm. I see the moon and the moon sees me. So I got her on there. And she's, she wanted to be a writer, so she's holding a pencil and some papers. Would like you like to paper. add the chips? Yes. Perfect. Oh, extra. Mm -hmm. It was actually for you. Oh, yeah. that was very thoughtful of you. Well, these look like they are ready to go in the oven. Mm. Uh, you can cook them for about 9 to 11 minutes. Again, I cooked them for 10. All right, well, these are the finished product. They look very good. They do. So do you want to just go in? Cheers. Cheers. It's I'm really good. Mm-hmm. It's good. Well, Mine. I think that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Leftovers. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. This week, an Australian boy smashed an egg on a xenophobic Australian senator. In other news... I'm here.
here at the Youth Climate Strike in Boston, Massachusetts. The youths have gathered here and in over 100 countries across the globe to call for climate action. The movement was inspired by 16-year-old Greta Thunberg of Sweden, who began skipping school every Friday to protest climate inaction. Today's event is open to people of all ages and we are here in Boston to get a better look. March 15th was what we called a deep strike day, so a lot of students have been striking every single Friday missing school, but we know that everyone, not everyone can do that. So Friday, March 15th was calling for people who don't normally strike to come out and support an especially big call to action to demand immediate climate legislation from our world leaders and asking them to comply with the Paris Agreement. So the fact is, this is a really strange time to be alive in history. Um, supposedly we're the last generation that can do anything about this and so you know that's a pretty scary thought. On the other hand with this huge problem comes um, great potential for um, exciting solution. We're fed up with the passive action that we've seen in the past so politicians saying things like oh yeah like we support sustainability look at this very very minimal bill that we put in last year or something. We're fed up with that and I think that we're done with that and we want to see like huge sweeping action and not just from them like I think the Sunrise Movement and like Serafina was talking about this strike like people are willing to do the work and we will so they should expect that. What I'd like to say to the youth who are facing this right now first of all thank you for climate striking you're elevating the conversation and um, actually the Secretary General of the United Nations um, decided to hold a summit in New York in response to the climate strikers. Oh, I'm so excited about the youth right now for gun violence and for taking really overt action about letting the world know how important they think climate change is. So, so walk out <laughs> and uh, talk to your parents and, and get involved in your uh, local government. The youth need to realize uh, a combination of uh, knowledge and experience and looking back over short term, because when I was young, they were worried about climate change back in the 60s and 70s. I guess sorry. Um, everyone kept on saying we were leaving a mess for our kids and grandkids. And I guess the first people to really say that were your guys' grandparents. So here's your mess. In the time that you were watching this segment, 450 acres of rainforest were destroyed and zero grams of plastic decomposed. Thanks for watching. I'm Amelia Tamayo and this has been In Other News. Bye! Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? With spring sports preseason starting this week, I wanted to tune in on one of the most popular March sporting events, the NCAA College Basketball Playoffs. Every year, people across the country fill out their brackets and place strong bets on who they predict will take home the college basketball championship. Men's basketball brings in a large audience and creates a month filled with drama, excitement, suspense, upsets, and lots of money. People with and without prior knowledge participate in filling out a bracket, so I wanted to use members of NHS to fill out a bracket and see how well we do. Gonzaga or Fairleigh Dickinson? Fairleigh Dickinson. Murray State or Marquette? Definitely Murray State with John Morant. Duke or North Dakota State? Uh, definitely Duke. North Carolina or Iona? North Carolina. Mississippi or Oklahoma? Oklahoma. Baylor versus Syracuse? Syracuse. Nevada, Florida? Nevada. VCU versus UFC? UFC. Mississippi State versus Liberty? Liberty. Virginia Tech versus St. Louis? Virginia Tech. Maryland versus Belmont? Maryland. LSU versus Yale? LSU. Aveline Christian versus Kentucky. Um, I think Kentucky if PJ Washington isn't injured, but if it is, I think God's going to be on the Christian school side. Villanova, St. Mary's. Villanova. Oregon versus Wisconsin. Oregon because Wisconsin can't score. Louisville, Minnesota. Louisville. UC Irvine or Kansas State? Kansas State. Purdue versus Old Dominion. Purdue. Michigan State or Bradley? Michigan State. Florida State or Vermont? Florida State. Cincinnati versus Iowa. Iowa. Utah State versus Washington. Utah State. Auburn versus New Mexico State. Auburn. Michigan versus Montana. Michigan. Virginia versus Gardner Webb. Virginia. Tennessee versus Colgate. Tennessee. Kansas versus Northeastern. 
Kansas. Ohio State versus Iowa State. Iowa State. Houston versus Georgia State. Houston. Northern Kentucky versus Texas Tech. Uh, Texas Tech. Seton Hall versus Wofford. Seton Hall. Arizona State or St. John's versus Buffalo. Buffalo. Will Zion Williamson bring home some hardware for Duke or will an unexpected champ rise to the occasion? Stay tuned for weeks to come for updates on our bracket and for official sit-down interviews with spring sports teams. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, I'm Kaylee Hunter Gasparini and welcome back to Tell It Like It Is. This week, I learned about Waiting for Gatto, the play directed by the transcript's own Mikey Diaz. When going to see shows, we always applaud the actors on stage, but we don't often consider those behind the scenes. I want to learn more about the less appreciated members of theater production with Nina Young, Waiting for Gatto's stage manager. During rehearsal, I am everybody's boss. Uh, so that means I need to keep rehearsal running smoothly, make sure everyone's doing what they need to do. And then kind of all the time I'm in charge of communication. So I hope people will realize that um, this old play that's kind of looked at as being um, a little boring and like something that everyone just has to read is actually so rich and full of um, humor and really beautiful moments. I also got to sit down with costume designers Mel Lowenthal and Mira Fowler to hear about their costuming decisions and experiences with the show. Um, we kind of both do the same work, like usually when we're working we're together. We have popcorn we, ideas. Yeah, yeah. And we will just like go pull stuff, try it out, like if something needs to be worked on or like sewed, someone will take it home, like whoever can do it. We, yeah, we normally go on trips together to thrift stores if we need to find something that's not in the costume shop, or we surf the internet for mm -hmm. previous productions of Gatto or ideas that maybe the director had. We hope that you might be able to see similarities in the way characters are costumed to the way they act on stage and how their story connects to other characters. So the textures in some of their clothes, mm -hmm. the clothing items they're wearing have to do with the character. I definitely look at character development through the costume and such because it does give a lot about their backstory and just the way they act and present themselves. There are so many opportunities to get involved with backstage help in shows and on stage so don't be afraid and if you are that's fine but come visit us and I'm sure you'll learn stuff and people are always willing to teach what they've learned over the years and are always welcoming to new people. So come, come visit us. Yeah, everyone's super nice, so yeah. don't be scared. It's a really nice environment. Waiting for Gatto will run next week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. with the matinee on Saturday at 2 p.m. in the Black Box Theater. Tickets are $5 for students, so you should definitely check it out if you can. Happy Friday. Thanks for watching. The transcript would like to congratulate their very own Lulu Kesson and the rest of the girls basketball team on a great run all the way to the state championship. Keep up the good work.